Before you go ahead and create your first Facebook ad, it's very important that you understand the keys to success. Many beginner advertisers dive straight in and it's no wonder that they struggle to get click-throughs, conversions and a return on their investments. By watching this lecture, you will be able to avoid those common mistakes and really understand the seven things that you need to focus on in order to create Facebook ads that will grow your business. This video is essentially a crash course in Facebook ads, so I highly recommend that you grab a pen and paper right now, start taking notes, because this is going to save you a huge amount of time, money and frustration. Now the first key to success with Facebook ads is targeting. And targeting simply means getting your ads in front of the right audience. This is not only the first key to success, but it is the most important and where I recommend you put most of your attention. The simple reason that targeting is so important is because there is such a massive audience on Facebook. There's over 1.8 billion active users. And for example, if you wanted to get just 180,000 customers from that audience, over 1.8 billion people, we're talking about a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage, 0.01%. So you need to be really laser focused in who you put your ads in front of, because remember that Facebook is an advertising company and if you hand them money, they are going to spend it. So the onus is really on you to get your ads in front of the right people if you wanna get the best results. Now the great news is that there is a ton of great ways to target your ads on Facebook and I wanna give you an overview of them right now. So the first way to target your ads on Facebook is with core targeting. And this allows you to put your ads in front of people who are maybe near you in a radius by demographics, so male, female, what age they are, interests, what Facebook pages they like, or their behaviors online, and if they're connected to your Facebook page or not. Now, when this came out initially, this was revolutionary and gave Facebook a huge advantage in the online advertising space because they had all this information from us when we created our profiles. That's why this information was so accurate and such an amazing thing when it first came out for advertisers. However, the game has changed now and there is a new type of targeting that is even more powerful. It's called custom audiences. And if you aren't using these, you're advertising like it's five years ago because custom audiences really allow you to target people on Facebook who you already have a relationship with. And as you can imagine, that's much easier to get a, a sale out of. Instead of just hitting up somebody who's cold, who hasn't heard about your business, or maybe targeting someone who's already been to your website, you have a much better chance of getting a sale. Now, in terms of the different types of custom audiences, they are many different ones. But the general thing that links them together or general theme is retargeting or remarketing. So retargeting to people who've already engaged with say your website and creating a custom audience of those people. Now you need to have the Facebook pixel in order to do that, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that step by step. You can create a custom audience and retarget people who are on your email list, who have engaged with your Facebook page, who have engaged with your app. You need to have the SDK installed to enable that. That's essentially the equivalent of the Facebook pixel. And you can also create custom audiences in many different ways. Even people who have watched a video that you put on Facebook, you could retarget those people with say a, a lead ad and get leads out of them. So extremely powerful, extremely flexible, and I'll actually be showing you how to set up all of these custom audiences later on in the course. So let's look at some use cases to try and bring this to life. So taking the example of an e-commerce site, let's imagine that we wanted to remarket to people who had visited our online shop. We can do that and make it even very personalized by using this type of remarketing called dynamic product remarketing. So in the ad here that we can see on the right hand side are the exact products that I looked at at the Adidas store. I can see them now in my Facebook newsfeed and I can go ahead and shop straight away. So that's just one example. You can do it in a ton of different ways, but you can see the power of remarketing using these custom audiences over just targeting people by interest who may be interested in your product, but haven't even taken the step to visit your website. 
Now the third and final way to target on Facebook is through lookalike audiences. And these are really a marketer's best friend because they allow you to scale your marketing efforts extremely efficiently. So a lookalike audience helps you to reach people who are like your current customers, website visitors, or Facebook fans. What they actually do is you use a source audience, so one of the custom audiences that you've created, and then use that to find similar people on Facebook. So for example, I had a source audience of 10,000 people, and I was able to scale that into a targeted audience of 2 million people who were similar to that audience of 10,000 people who had visited my website. So extremely, extremely valuable way that you can still scale your marketing efforts, but do it in a targeted way. So how would you start from scratch? You might say, okay, that's great, but I don't have any people coming to my website or using my app yet. So the process would be, you might run an ad starting using core targeting interests, that type of stuff. Then you get those people to maybe come to your website or have a look at your app. You can create a custom audience of those people. And then on the back of that, you could create a lookalike audience. So it is a process that you can build up and take advantage of all of these type of audience, even if you're starting from scratch right now. So that wraps up the first key to success, which is targeting. Now we're looking at the second key to success, which is funnels. So what is a marketing funnel and how does it really apply to Facebook ads? Well, here is actually a screenshot from inside the ads, ads create tool where you create Facebook ads. And you can see there's three columns here, awareness, consideration, and conversion. And this is essentially the funnel, although it's on its side. So if people firstly become aware of your product, then they actually consider taking an action like watching a video, going to your website, and then finally they'll convert, make a sale or uh, sign up or visit your store in person. So that's the type of marketing funnel. And this is an important mind frame to think in because Facebook ads and the Facebook platform is actually different than Google and Google AdWords. You don't hear a lot of talk about funnels in Google. And that's because on the right hand side here, you can see when people go to Google, they type in something like night shoes. I can see the ads pop up right there. But that's because I've already decided to buy Nike shoes or I'm interested in them because I'm typing them into Google. So my intention is much clearer and I'm probably much further down that funnel that we've talked about. Now over on the left hand side here, I don't go to Facebook and I don't browse my newsfeed because I have a specific thing in mind. I'm really there to connect with friends. And that's why you may need to make people more aware about your product first in Facebook and then start to move them down the funnel towards the sale. So here's an example of a couple of funnels that you could set up and think about. Say for example, you wanted to get sales for an ebook, an online course or anything. Firstly, what you could do is starting off and get some traffic to a landing page where you give away a free ebook or something like that. People pop in their email, you get their email address, and then you start an email sales funnel to get sales. That's one example. Another thing that you could do if you're an online coach or a local business, a lawyer or something like that, is you could create a lead ad. Once again, give away a PDF or an op option for a free 15 minute consultation. People pop in their email address, you do the consultation over the phone and you make the sale at the end of that. You could also set up a funnel, something like people to watch a video showing the new features of an app that you've released and people having a lot of fun with it. And then you could remarket to those people who've watched the videos to install the app. So those are a couple of examples, but the key thing is to think about the funnel and where people are in that funnel. Are they even aware of your product? Could they move to, cons to consider and take an action? And are they really ready for the sale before they've even taken that consideration? Moving on to the third key to success with Facebook ads, it's ad formats. Now, the key thing here is that you really wanna match your ad format to the objective. There's a lot of different formats for ads on Facebook. You can use videos, you can use images, you can use what's known as carousel ads. And here are some basic rules that you can follow. If you wanna get traffic to your website, you should use a really an image 
a link click ad or a carousel ad. If you want to get video views, obviously use a video. If you want to use collect leads, use a lead ad and, and lead ad forms. If you want to get conversions and sales, well, having a link straight there is going to be better than showing people a video because people are going to click and go directly there instead of staying on Facebook and watching the video. Now, if you want to run conversion ads, remember you have to have that Facebook pixel set up. And if this isn't making sense to you at all, don't worry, I will go into a lot of detail more later on. Finally, if you want people to engage with a Facebook post, you might be promoting a competition or something like that. Usually just a simple image is going to be the best. Now, moving on to the fourth key to success with Facebook ads, it's budgets. And this is the key question that comes up. How much does it cost to advertise on Facebook? Well, I think there's really two ways to look at this. One is to look at the absolute minimum. So this is a screenshot from Facebook for Business. It shows the minimum ad spend for the currencies that are listed up the top here. So for USD, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, Euro, a lot of countries there, the minimum spends are as follows. If you just want to get impressions, so people just to become aware of your ad, there is a minimum of $1 per day. But that's just gonna be an image people won't actually be able to click through. If you want people to click to get a like on your Facebook page, to watch a video, to engage with a post, then the minimum budget is going to be $5 per day. If you want to get something like more of a low frequency event, like an app install, then the budget is at least $40 per day. So those are some of the minimums. Let's have a look at it from another perspective and probably the better way that you should be looking at and matching your budget to your goals. So here are a couple of guidelines for maybe what are the type of expenses that you could be getting. Now, big disclaimer, these are just a guideline. I, you're not, I can't guarantee you're gonna get these, but I would encourage you to try and work towards these numbers. So if you wanna get Facebook fans, you wanna budget maybe 50 cents per fan. Email subscribers, $1 per subscriber. Website traffic, maybe about 35 cents per website visit. Product sales, you wanna budget maybe $30 per conversion. An app installs for a free app, budget about $2 per install. So results will vary, but there are some very rough guidelines to work towards. Fifth key to success with Facebook ads is the ad creative. And this is what people actually see in their Facebook newsfeed. So here are the four parts to a great ad creative. First, it needs to be visual. Remember that there is gonna be a lot of competition for eyeballs in the newsfeed, so it needs to catch attention. Bright colors, faces will really stand out. So we can see here that this example, it's visual. It pops really off the background, this nice bright cutter. It's relevant because the image is really related to what the ad is about, which is freelancing. Here's two people working at home. They look like they're having fun uh, freelancing. It, the ad should include an enticing offer, something that's gonna catch my attention. So interested in becoming a full-time freelancer, we can see freelancing A to Z, how to start working from home, learn from five, your full-time experience. So that's a pretty enticing offer. I can learn all that stuff. And again, all of those copy there is a strong call to action. And it's encouraging me to really learn more about it. Let's have a look at one other example. This is an ad for LinkedIn. Once again, it's bright. We got a picture of a girl here and a good face catching attention. It's relevant. You can see $50 ad credits. That's a good offer and learn more, strong call to action to really kick, click through and get that offer. Now, the sixth key to success with Facebook ads is split testing. And this is all about really, if you wanna maximize your budgets, you need to find out what is most effective in your ads in terms of copy, imagery, targeting, etc. So you want to, when you put out a campaign, not only have just one ad, one image, and one audience that you're putting it out to, you want to really test different variables. So here is just one example. There's many different ways that you can do this, but you could have two images. You wanna test which one gets more clicks. You can see there's a product here in the image or a person in the image using the product. And then you really test to see which one performs better. Now, the great news is, is these are pretty easy to set up in Facebook. And here are just some of the 
split tests that you can run. So in terms of the ad creative, you can test the headline, a different image, the landing page that you send people to, the placements in terms of does Instagram work better than the Facebook newsfeed or Facebook mobile. In terms of targeting, you can try different countries, different genders, different interests, different custom audiences. So the website custom audience, your email custom audience, etc. And there are other things like ad type, image versus video, bid type, etc. So that's just an overview of it. But the key thing to understand is testing is a big part of Facebook ads. And it's a real key to success to find out what really works for you. Now, finally, the seventh key to success with Facebook ads is tracking and reporting. And the first thing to do that's really important before you dive into reports is to define success for yourself. What are your business goals? Can you really get sales through emails? If that's the goal, then start to set some KPIs for those ads. What can I afford per email subscriber that really makes sense? And then you assess the results. In terms of the metrics, there's a lot of different metrics in these reports like CPM, CTR, CPC. What's really important out of all of these things and not to lose, lose focus is, is how much is the cost per desired action? So the cost to get a Facebook like, if that's what you want, to get an email subscriber, that's really the key thing to get focused on. So these reports are actually not that hard to look at. Final thing is if you want to track conversions and see how many people from a Facebook ad say buy a product on your store, you need to have the Facebook pixel set up and even you can track this through Google Analytics as well. And I'll show you how to do that. In terms of tracking reporting, this is the key message is you need to test, learn and iterate. And it kind of links back into our split testing. You want to really use that reporting as a feedback loop to improve the next campaigns. I would encourage you to set aside some budget to experiment. Don't expect to get massive results from the first campaign. It's going to be a little bit of a process until you find your rhythm. So to recap, here are the seven keys to success with Facebook ads, targeting funnels, ad formats, budgets, ad creative split testing and tracking and reporting. Of course, this is just an overview of the keys to success. We'll actually be putting this all into practice as we go through the course.